Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode eight of A Plague Tale Requiem, and a very special early hello both to Ronan and to Caroluna, along with Jody Kay and everybody else raiding over who just arrived. What timing? We are only just getting into it. Caroluna, I hope that you had a fantastic stream today. Jody Kay, I hope that your Sunday is going well, and also that none, nobody who raided over will mind seeing what we expect to be the story conclusion of A Plague Tale Requiem. I don't know that we're going to finish it today but that's going to be the intent i believe that we i believe that the end is within striking distance so we're going to get started here in just a few moments but on that note if anybody came over with caroluna and doesn't want to know anything about a plague tale i can say that i highly recommend it super good game very good story uh heavy emphasis on stealth and not necessarily avoiding combat, but picking and choosing your encounters very carefully, as well as scrounging around for resources. Uh, the closest game that I would sort of uh, liken it to mechanically, if not thematically, would be something like The Last of Us. I think that's probably a pretty good uh, touch point, because it's very much about sort of combing through these areas to see what you can find, upgrading the equipment that you might have, and then trying to not get in over your head with any sort of combat encounters if you can avoid it. Oftentimes, avoidance is the best way to go. Carolyn is saying that the stream was good. Actually got some things done. That's great. You were playing some Pal World, if I'm if I remember correctly. I, I take it that that is still a very good time. We're going to jump into episode 15 here, chapter 15 of Dying Sun, or sorry, it's called Dying Sun. Let's jump in together. Oh, one more button. Okay, Luna, thank you again for the raid. I really, really appreciate it. While sailing to the continent after surviving the island, Hugo and Amicia dream about their new future life. But the Count, filled with grief and rage since Hugo and Amicia... I guess that's technically true. Uh, since Hugo and Amicia killed his wife, catches up with them and boards them with his warship. Amicia and Arno fought the Count's men, but Amicia was hit and fell. Thinking his sister dead, Hugo attacked the Count who seized him. Attacked the Count who seized him. The Count planned to use Hugo as the spearhead of his army of conquest. Cornered, Arno chooses to flee, jumping overboard with Amicia still unconscious. Ah! Ah, damn you, you goddamn pig! Shh. Stop shouting. <laughs> For the pain. We use it on the battlefield. Hugo. I'm... I'm sorry. I was stuck. I had to pull us out or we'd be dead. We need to take him back. The Count knows what Hugo can do. We need to reach them before he... He hurts him even more. Let's go. Sophia and Lucas have gone ahead looking for horses. Clench your teeth. God damn it! Yeah. Hold on. It'll kick in soon. The Count. Did he say something? You broke his heart. So now he wants war. He said he'll use your brother to conquer. There'll be nothing left to conquer. <laughs> I know. Severe and Lucas? Shaken, but fine. The boy, he's the one who cleaned your wound. He's good. He went to the wreck to find supplies. Oh, I'm so glad they're alive. They'll be happy to see you through here. Come, take it easy. Don't go reopening that wound. Yes. I think... Your potion is starting to work. To think I could have killed that bastard count. You couldn't win this one, Arno. I, I, Amicia, I just wanted to point out he's talking about he could have killed the count if you hadn't interfered, lost him the fight, got him thrown in prison, and then rescued him at the eleven at the eleventh hour. This all could have been over with much, much sooner. That's what he's talking about, Amicia. Sorry, I just, I just need to lean in in the way that Arno seems reluctant to do. And hello to Patikin. It's ruined. It'll never sail again. 
Boats come and go. But it's the sea that keeps the fear going. You know what I mean. Focus on what matters to you. Because when it's gone... Thank you. We'll get him back. The words of a true knight, Arno! No. Really? I've never seen anything like you! Where's my brother, you bastard? Safely in my possession! Until he's ready to serve! Until he sees your head in a rag! And knows this old world must burn! Bastard! I'll handle him. Like hell you will! Listen to me for once, you damn mule! Why? So you can have your revenge? So that you can save your brother. I'll make him tell us where Hugo is. Cover my ass and stay alive. I'll handle this one. Kill the girl! Why would you, my lord? Reinforcements are coming! Watch out! Um, hold on. You can You hurt! No! I can't move! Okay, hold on. We'll get you out of here! Stupid bastard! Yeah. What have you done with the boy? He's my son now. My sacred weapon. The child is without yeah. You won't finish your evil work. Um, oh, crud. I will, but I'll finish you first! Oh, for goodness sake! I will run away. Demolish them, girl! It's your tougher than they are! Where did you take my brother? Answer that and I may give you a quick death. Where's the boy? No. I will compromise Why are you all so Okay, but run. I'm coming, Hugo. They can't stop us. Oh, hold on. Okay, sorry. There's a lot, just a lot of yelling happening right now. I just briefly want to acknowledge that I actually completely do understand why, um, Amicia would have, like, sided with the Count over Arno in the previous thing. It's just that Arno doesn't, and I'm just thinking about it from his perspective. B, uh, this guy has, like, a flaming thing, and I'm pretty sure that I thought of something new to do with these guys. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I kind of feel like if we throw tar at him. Yeah. Should have thought of that when we were fighting him last time. Oh! I want to say what I can. He thinks I'm dead. He gave himself to the macula. I'll say. You took the boy to Marseille after what happened to your damn island. Shut up! I will take care of it. <laughs> Open your eyes! It's too late! Now everyone will die! And he... 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 Oh no! We must leave now! You're not going anywhere! <laughs> um... What is that bloody thing? You damn idiots! Face the truth for once! It's your last chance! Why did you take up arms? No! Ah, no! To fill the void left by your son! Do not speak of him! His blood is on your hands! It was war! You abandoned us to the enemy! <coughs> you can redeem yourself now! Give a noble command! No! Stop this madness! Um. And let the boy go! Okay, uh, hold on. Okay, not what I meant, but whatever. You don't give me back my brother! I'd like so much to kill you. Uh, hold on. To okay, I to went to press X, but... So confident. Sir, we must evacuate you! <coughs> no! We finish this! 
kill the girl! Yeah! She's trying to save you, you assholes! And my face like my arm. Yeah! Ah! Like the days. Emily is dead. She was the only chance this world no! Now you will all kneel before me or die. It was a time for peace. Um, hold on. You had to ruin everything. Okay, but stop Sorry, it. I had. You ruined it yourself with you your life. To run. Ah! Your technique is strong. Ah! You spent too much time ah! training with scumbags. They were better men than you'll ever be. Um, I don't know who's closer to me right now. Okay, thought I could maybe make him pause for a second. Okay, so I need to stun him for a second so I can get around back. Oh, oh, right. It will kill the sun. The nebula. You did it. You idiot. Now we all owe you. It's everywhere. The rats will spread unchecked. time does it matter let's just go make room i will take the reins i have to do something Just a very, very quick pause here to say hello to Mistaken, who apparently also just finished it. Um, yeah, I'm very, very much enjoying it. I hope you're also having a very good Sunday.
And hello to Inner Tooth, if I didn't say Inner Tooth, uh, hello to Inner Tooth as well. How far are we from Marseille? Not too far, I'd say. Amicia, are you all right? No, I could have. You couldn't. I don't even know how you're even standing. You did all you could, and he knew it, Amicia. Besides, you gave him what he needed most. The Count's death. No. Someone to care for. A real purpose. Yes. Yes, he gave his life for us. I won't let it be for nothing. Now we need to find out where Hugo is. That's the problem. Marseille's a damn big city. The burst of the nebula probably left marks. Whatever's happening over there, Hugo must be at the center of it. How can we know? He's still alive. There'll be signs. I hope. Wow. That kind of sign? Yes. It's him! But I don't think it's a good sign. What's that noise? Is it... coming from the city? It's coming from the ground! What? What happened? Play to the hills! No! No, the sea! Let's find a small boat! What's that damn rumble? Enough! You're scaring the children even more! The gates of hell have opened! Marseille is lost! It's the final chant of the macula. Barricading the gate. Why? Because that rumble is coming from the other side. But what about those still inside? They're dead already. Keep going. What do we do? There's another gate further on, but that hay is in the way. Wait, we have this cannon. You know how it works? I don't know. Wait, you push here. That must be it. I've figured it out, I think. Go on then. Boy, you better be sure. <laughs> Seems like the sort of thing that's going to go very badly if you don't know how it works. And hello to Borlack. Borlack, I hope you're having a very good Sunday um, also. Uh, wait, what? Sorry, what am I shooting at, though? I thought the gate so that we could get in. No? Um... Oh. Whoa! Is that... Greek fire? Yes! The Count recovered some carts built by the Order! Oh, um, do I just fire it at random? We. Like, I assume this is an infinite, so we should probably focus on shooting things that we should shoot. Am I supposed to shoot the wooden fence over here? So we're going behind these walls? Don't think about it now. Let's go, Sophia! Here we go again! Okay, sorry about that. I thought she said the haze is in the way, not the gate. Like, the haze would make it difficult to... So she wasn't sure if she wanted to try to go around because of its, it's the visibility is very low. <laughs> Those tremors are not coming from the ground. No, they're coming from the city walls. It feels like a heartbeat. His heart commanding them. Can you imagine how we... So this is how it starts. What? Our punishment. What the hell? The Down!
I got some sort of upgrade. Hugo. to Marseille. Oh, you came in the loveliest season. Let's go find my brother. Oh, geez. Someone is asking if years passed. Uh, I don't think so, but the, the like it's it's already sort of been established that the the rat like degradation is very fast. Oh. And I thought you were unstoppable. I'm not. I just forget it sometimes. Lucas, I must say. It's an honor to have you by my side. You're the most reliable, steady, nice thing in the world. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, you're my family. You're sharing all this because you think you won't make it? You all still have a lot to live, so you'll make it. This is a damn order. He deserves so much better than this. Now, just watch your step. And also, hello to Harmonious Crow. Hugo has become their leader. It was always his favorite game. Conquering. Well, someone's dream came true. Um, yeah. No, I don't need the workbench, but I need this. Um, well, since I don't know what that is, we'll go ahead and recycle it. So, I don't think I have enough pieces right. to upgrade anything, to but I would upgrade the sling if I could do any. Yeah, I've only got 29 pieces. For anybody that missed the previous episode or any parts of it, I do now have the unbreakable tool, so we no longer need to worry about tools to upgrade. Hey, look who survived. Uh, and also, as we're going, yes, I strongly agree. That's, that artwork, Sam Lander, came out awesome. Uh, please let Netheryam know. Carnation. The first flower Hugo offered me. Just before we met you, Lucas. Oh. Makes me feel old. That flower is sure to put a smile on his face. Yes. Now. So we're really going in there? I'm sorry. That's all right. I had enough fun, I guess. And my boat is wrecked anyway. Just tell me we can stop this. If we can get to him, maybe. But it'll be a deep dive. Listen, I'll go. I'm the one Amicia. who... Amicia. 
We need whatever connects him to this world. And we're all tied to him. So... So let's dive. land. Not for landing, that's for sure. Sorry. Don't be. You've done more than enough. Lucas and I, we've been through this before, sort of. Not all legends need sailors, huh? That's sad. Go. And come back with him. I'll see you under the sun. Keep going. Hugo's close. Need to find Lucas fast. I'm not going anywhere, Amicia. We'll come back for you. I know. Go, go! <gasps> Is that really you? Amicia, I'm here! Hey! And Sophia? She can't walk! It's only the two of us now! We can still do this. You see that piece of wall standing below? The rats are going around it. Let's be there. Yes! But wait, wait! One mistake and... I know, but I've been counting, and they keep the exact same pacing. We can make it between two waves. Lord. All right. All right! Ready when you are. Don't worry. I'll keep up with you. To the standing walls. Hide, wait, and repeat. Yeah, hold on. Can I at least? Yes. All right. Lead the way. All right. No. Yeah. Ah, um, this doesn't seem good. <laughs> Scream. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, so apparently that was not the correct st standing wall. Oh, I'm really letting Lucas down. Okay, so... Oh, wait. Nope. Yes. Wait, no, Foster. Lucas, hold on. I'm still trying to work out where we go. This is my best guess? I don't know. Uh, oh, fives, thank you very much. Let's go. Whoa, careful. That gate looks stuck. Okay, well, I'm gonna hope that this is. Wait, wait. Are you ready? Oh, hold on. I think so. 
They're coming! Come on, do it! Wait, I think I should wait for the next wave. Um, I don't know if it's right. blanket just like when you're sad the nebula's condensing around him so much must be going on in there what should we expect to find hard to tell think of it as a giant crucible whether the macula hugo and the nebula emerging the visions of a deceived child Dissolving into the atmosphere. Changing the world. This is the last threshold. All natural laws stop here. So we must cross it too? To reach your brother, yes. All right. Uh, hello to Hank, also. Uh, you've joined at a fairly climactic moment. Take a deep breath. was sorry really quick hank was asking is this a new kid lucas is somebody that they've known since the first game and amicia has recently sort of like reconnected with him he knows a lot about the macula which is the condition that uh hugo has and hugo is presumably inside that big uh bubble that they're lucas! heading towards Focus. You go first. Uh, find him. A phoenix. 
Here. Another one. What's going on? What's going on? What is this place? The phoenixes. They meant something. They showed the way. They must lead to him. Am I losing my mind? Hugo! Are you doing this? All natural laws stop here. Right. Hang on to that. Did you put them here, Hugo? No. You did. Hugo! Oh, thank the Lord! Where are you? I'm here. I'm close. I can't see you! Because you're still looking back. Those birds are the only thing here! They're showing the way, aren't they? We tried that way, Amicia. And it was a lie. Not entirely. There, there was truth in it! It was a lie. And it brought death. People brought death! Hugo, I need a way to get you out of here! You need new ways. Things have changed, but you're still thinking as if they haven't. I'm... I'm trying! I think, Amicia, he's somewhere around. Well, if... Oh, do something! Do something! If the birds don't point the way, then I kind of feel... Okay, well, now I'm talking Why over her. are you still following those birds? I'm lost, Hugo. I don't know what to do. This place belongs to the past. Leave it. Find your own way. So, I need a way out. I just would be surprised if run in a random direction was the correct answer here. Um, yes, that's it, I think. I'll keep going. What's happening to me? I feel... and scared but I'm with you I'll do whatever it takes I want to see you They do! Stop coming! They 
won't. Stop trying to be so tough. forward when you're scared. I know. It's all right. You will do it. I will. I'll do it again. I'll learn. It must work the same way. I need to go back there. Way out. I need that way out. Far from those birds. Keep a straight line. You'll get there. Okay, just a straight line. I was just trying to figure out what was the most opposite way from the, what the birds were pointing. <laughs> Sam Linder says, don't let anything weird happen while he's gone. <laughs> I wonder how the uh, human beings that live in France feel about this particular depiction <laughs> of their country. You're learning. 14th century or not. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, those things are close. Do better this time. Get this right. The well, it won't stop them. You've got to be sharper. I feel like Hugo's saying to stop. Phoenixes again! Oh, I think, God damn it! What are you doing? Don't be so hard on yourself. It's not easy, that's all. But you see clearer now. You've learned. Yes! I'll finish this! I know. Come on! I need to go back. Oh, come on! You won't get me again. I'm getting to him. I'm getting him back. I'm on my way. All right. Stop making the same mistake. You have to move forward. End this fight. How? Can't see you're looking for us close. An illusion of protection. A bracelet. Yes. A symbol of long ago. Of your past beliefs. <laughs> there! I get it! This is pointless! I surrender. I'm tired of all this. Too tired to fight. Please, I need to see you. I'm proud of you. Where? Where are you? I'm here. You go. Come, come. <laughs> I thought I'd never see you again. Me too. I was so scared. But you've done it. Can you walk? Yes. Do you know? to get out of here. Yes, come. Oh. Let's go. Let's leave this hell. One way or another. Amicia, I thought you were dead. I really did. I know. I felt like I was all alone. So I made a mistake. Hugo, we tried all we could. But it's a big mistake. So many people are dying right now. I can feel it. And it's just the beginning. Let's just get out of here. We can make it stop. We'll find Mother's house. And live. Really live. But... We've earned it. This place feels... familiar. The way out is at the very end. Hello. Can I... 
do something for you. Hello? We met already. Hey, what's going on with you? It's the boy! He killed her! I'm sorry. Killed her? What the hell? What's going on? She's right. I'm doing this. How? I see no rats. It's the mistake I made. It's what I've become. Let's not stay here. Come. We need to fix this, Amicia. We will find a solution, but first we must get out of here. Yes. Uh, hello to HRF dude. Um, I, I might caution very quickly. We are in the final sections, I think, of um, A Plague Tale Innocence. Oh, sorry, Plague Tale Requiem. So I wouldn't want to spoil too much, but it is quite a spectacle. Look at them. I loved this place. And these people. You have to stop this. I can't. Just focus. You did it before. Have you already forgotten? It's a lie. It's the macula playing tricks. I am the macula now. I am. What? No. You know it could happen. It's too late. No, no, no. I let the macula take all of me. Now this is what happens. I... I know. We must do something. We must stop people from dying. Maybe if we leave, it will stop. Hugo, can it stop? I meet you with Amicia. Not just them, but all the others. And even more as the rats spread. So this is the end? Not completely. We have one chance. The last one. Tell me. I'll do anything. I think you know already. I... You must stop me. To stop the macula. Hugo? You can't ask me that. You're the only one who can stop me from becoming a monster. You're not a monster. I will be. If I kill all I love. All these nice things you showed me. I understand, but... Please, Amicia. I... I'll try. stop myself now. Only you can stop me. Hugo! I love you. I've been happy with you. Goodbye, Amicia. I love you. I love you so much. But when you're gone, there'll be nothing else. I'll be alone. <laughs> All alone. <laughs> I can't. I'm here. Oh, no. Can you stand up? Yes.
He's there. Yes. Do you know what you have to do? Yes. I know. Oh. Okay. So normally at the end of a big playthrough, I will take the time over the credits to talk about the experience with the game. And I don't know how I'm supposed to do that in this case. Um, I would actually have to take some time to try to think of a darker ending that they could have arrived at. Um, I guess I'll just start with something else for a bit. From a technical perspective, this game is extremely well done. Uh, the previous game that uh, we played here on the stream was Jedi Survivor. It was also a very fun game from a gameplay perspective, and it was fun to explore and big Star Wars energy and stuff like that. But from a um, technical perspective, rather uneven. By comparison, this game runs great, looks fantastic, has a much sort of like tighter focus on where you are and where you're going and where you can go. It, it has uh, less of an open level situation going on, except for very certain um, circumstances. So they can sort of like budget their visuals and their, um, their, their tech in a much more targeted way. But that doesn't make it any less impressive, especially since this is not... I'd, I'd have to, like, maybe learn a little bit more, but I don't get the sense that the Plague Tale games, like, big, huge, triple-A uh, experiences with hundreds and hundreds of people working on them. Uh, it's much more of sort of like a, uh, an older school, like, double-A production, and the people that put this together are just aces. Now, that's just from a technical perspective, because you wouldn't be, you know... Uh, out of line to think it's a big AAA game based on the quality of the music and the quality of the writing and the performances and the motion capture and, and every other part of it. Um, we may not be done though because here we are moving forward to the legacy of the Darun family. Um, let's see what's next.
feels higher each time. <laughs> oh, Sophia, you came! Of course. I wouldn't miss this. Careful, I smell like a goat. Well, then welcome to your land, goat. How do you feel? Are you ready? I guess so. No point in wasting time, then. Wait! Well, let's go. As you wish. I left the horses up there. So, what have you been up to these last months? Walking, fixing the house, trying to exhaust myself. Does it work? It's better, yes. Good. You had me pretty worried, you know. I'm fine, Sophia. It's been a year. Already. And how's the business going? Good. Doing more legal trading these days. Oh, what happened? Well, I just want to live longer. Really? I like a quiet sea better than a storm. Speaking of which, we'll depart tomorrow. Great. Great. Is our alchemist coming? Lucas. Oh, no. He's still on the road. Studying. All by himself. They grew up so fast. He needed this. Whew. Getting chilly. Let's pick up the pace a bit. Lord Impa, thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you have a great evening, if, if I read correctly. And congratulations on Ori. So, do you know where we can put you ashore? Not yet. But I think I'll know when I come across the signs. Of the macula? Yes. It leaves marks on things and people. I think I can find where the next carrier and protector will rise. The next plague. I want to set the path for them, like Aelia did for us. No use telling you just to rest, then. None. Fine. Ah, oh, it smells so good. And the quiet. Yes, I'll miss it. Getting there. Boys, this is Amicia. Be kind to her. It's a special day. Hi. some time I have one last thing to do take as much as you want my back still hurts from the road no storm coming you're the only one I see it won't take too long it's going to be all right um, Jody K have a great evening Uh, well, hold on. I want to answer Crow as well. It should probably wait until the end, but it's a good question that Crow's asked. Uh, okay, then not down there. The sea will look so flat compared to this. <laughs> Absolutely not. Oh my god. 
Come on, you're guessing now. It's me. I'm coming in. It's going to be all right. They didn't used to come here before. I always knew. You'd be good at making friends. I wasn't sure I was ready, but Sophia's here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is it so hard? <laughs> we never backed down, right? We held. May this earth remember how much you loved it. May it remember all you gave to protect it. I remember. And I won't let it be forgotten. Yeah, so Crow had asked a short time ago, uh, did I en did I enjoy sort of like the big finale? And I mean, enjoy is uh, kind of a difficult word to apply to it. Um, if you guys have ever seen the old Twilight Zone episode, It's a Good Life. And then a lot of people these days are more familiar with it from the spin-off. Can I... I'm just worried that it might be loud, and I really like the music. I'm gonna risk notching it down a little bit, hopefully. Not too much. We'll just bring it down some. Uh, it, was, it was spoofed in The Simpsons, so most people know it from there, but the little kid who can make, you know, wish for whatever he wants and it comes true. And if you've ever seen the original Twilight Zone episode, there's this one, um, 
there's this one act, this one uh, person in town, this one guy in town, who's so desperate, living under the, you know, whims and and uh, idle wishes of this kid, that he implores anyone else in town, anyone, while the kid's attention is focused on him, he implores anyone to come up behind him and beat him to death with a chair, cave his skull in with a chair, is what he wants them to do, and. For a good chunk of this game in particular, less so the previous game, I was thinking that for every single person that's not Amicia, up to and including Lucas or Arno, that would be the most sensible thing to do. And now I'm really glad that I didn't like bring that up as like a like a joke or something like that, because it just it never ever would have occurred to me that they were gonna go for a final scene where Amicia herself was gonna have to deal the mortal blow to her young brother after everything that they've been through. Um, I think that it's really daring what they've done here, that it's so, it's so dark. And a lot of times at the end, I might try to pull apart the narrative to say like, what was it about? Like not necessarily what was the moral of the story, but what was the main theme of it? And it's hard to come walk away from this with something other than sometimes you're going to fight as hard as you possibly can. You are going to fight beyond the point where you lose yourself and most of the other things that matter to you in service to something, in the pursuit of something that you love above everything else, and it still isn't going to be enough. Sometimes you just can't break from destiny. You can't, you can't push back the tide of what's going to happen. And the most you can hope to do is to say at the end of it that you did absolutely everything you could. You left nothing on the table, and you fought for it up and down. You pushed yourself beyond human endurance, and it still wasn't enough. So what are you going to do next? Uh, from the conversation that she had with uh, Sophia there, she's going to go try to stop it from happening again to somebody else, to some other brother and sister pair out there, because she thinks that she can recognize the signs. Uh, Batikin was also wondering if they might do a third game, because they could, and it would be... It would be really interesting, I think, to introduce the idea of having, boy, I want to hear the French performances. We'll get back to that in a second. I've probably already said my piece on that. Um, if, if it were, if it were me and I was being really cheeky about it, I would want to put, put out a game that didn't have Plague Tale in the name at all. And it was a completely different third-person game set in sort of like a vaguely fantasy universe. And at about the third, uh, about a third of the way into the story, Amicia shows up and says, Hey, I've got some bad news about you and your brother. <laughs> That'd be really, like, can you think of something more epic than a completely, like, uh, below the belt Plague Tale game? You don't even know that's what it is until, like, oh no. <laughs> Um, the, like, like in the modern age, that the spoilers would be d d dramatic. But um, no, so I talked a little bit about that, like the artistry to it, and I started talking about the music to it. The music is one of those things that I, I, I will often like give passing like mention of music, just because I don't really have the vocabulary to talk about it. And a game like this really w makes me wish that I did because it's so good. It really amps up the energy of whatever the scene is, whether they are going for a walk through a meadow or, you know, sort of like uh, exploring a nice market square or the fight sequence that happened when they were trying to rescue Arno from the gallows at the end of the previous episode. There's... The, the 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 team that put together the music here and performed it are just really 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 good and i again i just don't have the musical language to talk about why it's good or something of all things the music sort of reminded me of the halo franchise where it has this one theme that's used consistently all throughout but it is presented and remixed and up-tempoed and down-tempoed and uh, just replayed in a variety of different ways so that it's always the Plague Tale Requiem theme. And now I want to go back to the first game to see if it was in there as well. But it always, 
has the energy that is best suited to the to the moment. And then somebody else had pointed, I think it was MV Hank, about just the choir work there as Amicia was walking up to the to the cocoon. Um, this story. I, see, what I would need to do is go back and re-watch our VODs of the first the first series, which, by the way, is due to be up on YouTube now pretty soon. But if anybody wanted to watch the playthrough of the first game, this story felt much more focused than that one does in my memory. But I'd really have to go back and look. I just remember being surprised at some of the, like, additional characters that got on and on. There was this whole sequence, like, around the, the, the halfway mark where Amicia and Hugo were hanging out with, like, these three other kids. And I just... I, it hadn't really occurred to me that they'd be making allies and that those allies would then have their own sort of skill sets or their own knowledge that they'd be be assisting with. It was just, I never knew what was coming next. And the same is true in this game as well. And I mentioned that in a previous point. It just sort of like takes these turns that feel entirely organic, but somehow still catch me off guard. There's something about the way that the story is structured that plays a lot differently than most games. Uh, HRF dude is saying the music was outstanding. There's a live performance of the original soundtrack, which is amazing. Now I'm going to have to look this up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I just want to turn it back up. Uh, give me five seconds here. All right. Hold on. The only other, the only quick note that I have there is that that sounded a lot like an automated respirator to me that was wheezing in the background. I may be wrong, but I really expected that to pull back and to have it be set in like the modern day. Um, I've received a special paint for the crossbow and can now create a new game slot at a special difficulty level with all codex upgrade skills obtaining your last playthrough. Interesting, they're not going to charge $20 for New Game Plus. I guess that makes Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth still the only game on planet Earth that does that. Anyway, um, let me notch it back down here for a second. Uh, hold on, let me just go like that. Yeah, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. It's an interesting situation there, but that's, that's for a different topic. Um, yeah, as Simulator says, the footfall sounded much more like a modern tile hospital floor. I suppose it could have been on, like, stone flooring, but, like, almost as if they wanted to leave no ambiguity at all. Those sound a lot like high heels and then also the, um, the, the sound of a modern respirator. Um... I'm trying to think of anything else. Like, like this is going to be one of those games where, like, tomorrow and three days from now, I'm going to regret all the things that I didn't talk about here. Um, the voice work was outstanding. If, rather than rehash my surprise and overall disagreement with the idea that they moved away from Fre French accents for the French characters uh, towards uh, more British voice acting, I will say that like, let's just take that and put that over there because I've said my piece on it. The voice acting was awesome. It was so good um, all the way throughout. This is a game with such a focus on narrative that if the performances aren't there and like, like one of the things that sort of speaks to it as being more of like a double A game is that if it's not inside of a cutscene, a lot of the character like facial expressions and the, the way that their eyes move feel very flat. But the voice acting 
always carries it. It never lets down. So it's very easy to overlook the fact that they didn't have like a professional animator sitting there and like dolling up the in-game character models with more realistic facial animations because frankly that's not important when you have voice acting that's as good as it is um i would i would love to know if the voice actor for hugo is the age of hugo because if that person is not like hugo-ish age if that's like like a lot of time you know women will be cast to play as like young boys just because they can they can hit those sort of like timber whoever played Hugo was especially good and again it feels a little bit weird to talk about like particularly funny moments but some of the lines from Hugo like the line of the game was when after everything that they'd been through they realized that their that their mother's on the island and Hugo just asked is she going and just like a completely stricken face like goes completely white and it's like is she going to scold us and <laughs> I do my best to never pause in the middle of a cutscene. <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to listen to the rest of the dialogue if I didn't stop it for a moment. Um, and then there's the, like, like, be careful, there might be a spider under there. Hugo... Hugo is... Hugo would have been, I feel like, the character that would have been subject to the greatest amount of attention and writing and revision and testing because if you as the player find Hugo annoying, if you don't like Hugo, then Amicia's journey is just not going to resonate at all. And instead, they found a way to make him exactly as old as he was meant to be. And I, I have to say... As I was playing this, I was wondering, like, if there's a third game and they move the, the clock forward, is Hugo going to be as endearing if he's, like, 13? You know, and, and, and Amicia is, like, a young woman at that point. Like, are you still going to be, like, able to connect with him in the same way? And I guess we're not going to learn that specifically, but it was... I was very, very impressed by how they wrote Hugo. I also did a masterful job with Lucas. Like, from one of the earlier episodes, I was giving Lucas kind of a hard time, but they just... Again, it would have been easy to have a character that is just like, you know, Harley Quinn, that's only, that's at least to start with, only there so that the Joker has somebody to talk to. Obviously, now Harley is, like, her own completely flesh character. But at the time, it was like, well, they just need somebody who's not Hugo so that Amicia can talk to that person and that, you know, we can, like, advance the plot. But Lucas is not great at combat. He's not great at athletics, but he is very, very well book learned and extremely good at problem solving. So he might not be able to execute on the plans, but he's able to, like, think very quickly and... They never, like, I never got the sense that he just wasn't afraid. He was just willing to push through all of that because he cared a lot about the Daroons and wanted to help them. And and also sort of recognized that this was probably important to humanity, but also it never felt that pragmatic. There was never anything, like, mercenary about it. It was just like, this was the right thing to do, and he was going to help this family out. Um, Caroluna has got to turn in. Caroluna, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for the raid, and I hope you had a great evening. Um, so, Hank is saying that Lucas is played by Kit Connor. I don't recognize the name there. Logan Hannon is his name. Oh, and HR dude is saying, HRF dude is saying that the voice actors got nominated for Game of the Year, but lost to God of War. Well, it makes me very interested to play God of War, because I, I don't, like, no shade on God of War, but it's... It, it would have a lot to live up to here. Um, and I'll also say that the... Like, whichever one I personally choose doesn't mean that the other one didn't deserve God, you know, Game of the Year. But yeah, no, they, they did really, really great. It was a different person for Lucas in the second one. I didn't know that. Was was Kit Connor named in the credits? Because I, I didn't see one way or the other. Also, I'm just not familiar with Kit Connor's work. Um, and then, then, sorry, you you just have the other the other um, actors like Arno and um, Sophia, who 
So, so I will say one thing about the writing, and this this might be a me thing. It, like, like I'm just gonna say right here, anybody that watches the channel knows that I'm not great with faces and I'm not great with names. It's just the way that I am. I absolutely knew that there was a very large man with a shield with our in armor that like clocked Amicia in the head and gave her severe concussion and that that sort of drove like a third of the game. However, when he showed up not a terribly long distance later, and wasn't wearing that armor, I just had no idea who that was. And like, if I was to rewatch those scenes now, there are scenes where the big knight has his mask up and, oh, that's Arno, and I probably recognize him immediately now. But right at the moment, when Lucas was like, Amicia, Amicia, wake up, and I found a nice man to help us. And she reacted very strongly. I really was like, I, I don't even have a prediction on who this is. Like, clearly she knew who it was, but yeah, Amicia recognized the face of her attacker in the haze of a severe concussion much more quickly than I did sitting here drinking my water. Like, I just, I didn't, that, that particular transition and, and the thing is, I can't think of a way that I would have recommended it be done better, because I think this is just a case of me not being good with faces. Because here's what I would not have wanted. You know how sometimes games will do, like, the flashback? They'll, like, cut back and, like, do a like black and white flashback so that you know who it is? I would much rather have a few moments of confusion, and then I sort of, like, figure out by context, rather than having the game over-explain it. So, again, that's not a complaint. I just, I'd like to think of a more, like, I guess if he had, like, a distinctive scar on his cheek or something that somebody like me could, like, latch onto. But, honestly, that was just, like, it was a few moments of, like, I literally don't know who this person is that Amicia is responding to. And then, through context, it became up. And I wanted to touch on that again, because lest anybody thinks, like, there is such a thing as, like, what would this character do? And in the scope of how Amicia generally feels about Arno and the fact that they come, they came to this lovely island under the pretense that they were looking for a cure for Hugo, but then it turned out that Arno was actually trying to make Hugo summon the rats and kill everyone to murder this yet unknown duke that she doesn't know at all. Yeah, I can see that she'd be pretty pissed off about that. It was like, hold on, hold on. We can't let Arno get away with this. So let's go like sabotage his side of the fight so that, you know, the, the duke, the duke survives. Because the only thing that she has reason to know is that he betrayed her. Now, all of that said, and that's that's Amicia's viewpoint, from Arno's viewpoint, he cut a deal with Hugo. I'll get you to the island safely. He risked his life to do that, all to, like, go after the Duke. And I, I had a question that I wanted to ask about Arno's um, motivations that I'll circle back to here in just a second. Then they get there, and Amicia, not only does Hugo not live up to his end of the bargain, but then Amicia sabotages the fight so that he gets captured... Um, and is then, like, rescued at the very, very last second after Amicia finds out that, oh, whoops, maybe I, maybe I backed the wrong horse on this one. So that's why earlier in this episode when he was like, and to think I could have killed him and avoided all this or whatever he said. And Amicia's like, well, there's nothing you could have done. That's what, that's why I paused with it. I was like, hold on, Amicia, let's not rewrite history here. <laughs> he was right. He was right, and you were wrong, and she was wrong based on the best information that she had at the time, but I really was a little bit surprised when, when Arno was not like, no, Amicia, that's not what I was talking about. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's good writing when you have two characters with different motivations and a different set of information coming at the same situation and suddenly finding themselves at loggerheads because they just didn't... Um, they haven't communicated and are not going to see eye to eye on this very fundamental thing. Now, here's my question about Arno, because there was a big fight earlier in this episode. Arno and the Duke are going after it. Round three, as far as I know, because we only saw round two during the fight that I was just describing where Amicia sort of like, like she knocked a, a mass down on him or something. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. So here they are. It's round three, and the two of them are yelling at each other while I'm fighting for Amicia's life and by proxy Arno's life. So I might not have caught all of it, but am I correct? Did the Duke make a comment to Arno about how Arno wanted to use Hugo to replace his own son? 
I think I heard that, but I might also have gotten the voices mixed up and it might have been Arno needling Hugo about like, f you know, having this found son to replace his, his, his actual flesh and blood son. So I was trying to figure out whose son were they talking about? Because absent that, I feel like I still don't know what Arno's motivation was to kill the Duke. It was probably explained here and there, but here at the end, I feel a little bit like it's implied that something went down with Arno's son, and that's why he's motivated now to kill the Duke. Other than that, I, I don't think that we're supposed to have like a, like, we didn't read the Codex entry that explicitly explained it. I didn't watch the animated prequel to this. Um, I think it's just like, you're not necessarily supposed to really know. The Duke wanted a son because his wife was infertile, but Arno's son was in a battle that was in the Duke's command that got them killed. So which one was needling the other one about the son? Arno was mad that his son died in vain. Okay, that's sort of like where I thought it was. Wood, hello to Wood, was saying uh, Kid Connor was the voice of Pan in the HBO Golden Compass series. I also have not seen that. I apparently need to look up Kit Connor because I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like I've heard that. Heard that name before. So yeah, that was, and, and I have to say at no point was I wondering like, I hope that we get a really detailed backstory about Arno and why he's mad at the Duke. Whatever the reason was, if anything, that aspect of it helped to make the world feel like a bigger place, that it wasn't just about the macula. You guys have heard me talk about this in like Blade Runner. In Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2048 and anything that's vaguely associated with Blade Runner, everybody has one topic. There's only the one thing that they care about, which is replicants. There's never a sports ball game on television. There's never an election coming up. There's never like this new product that just got released. Um, even in the even in the one with like the holographic girlfriends. No, it's just replicants, and that's all we ever talk about. Well, here they're not all just talking about the macula all the time. They've got the child of embers, which I guess turns out to be related, uh, and they've got like this big um, market that they wander around in at the start of the first game where people are just like going on about their regular lives. They're not all sitting in macula class all the time. And that extends to the Duke and Arno, which is whatever it was that went down between them, it was something totally unrelated to what's happening now. It turns out that other characters in the world have their own backstories totally divorced from Amicia and Hugo. And Amicia and Hugo are at best, a means to an end in somebody else's story where they're the protagonist. And I'm perfectly comfortable with that because ultimately in our story, Amish is going to say, well, I don't give a shit about this at all. I I'm not going to get involved in this. I'm going to make sure that the Duke doesn't die because she doesn't want to be responsible for that. But other than that, she's just sort of like from there gets sort of like swept up in the events of the island. Again, it just felt really organic to me that all of the characters are acting on their own motivations and even if we're not to understand all of what they are it still felt like a real living world so i just really like that um i was also glad that it wasn't like a redux of the first game with like the order and you know they they want to i'm trying to remember like a lot of the first game because it's been a couple years for me but that you know well we want to like what was it specifically that they were trying to like, I think they were trying to like transfer Hugo's power or something like that. Whatever it was, and please forgive me if that's way off the mark, because again, it's been a while. This just felt really differently. And this was all about Hugo having these extremely vivid dreams that seemed to be leading him to a specific location where he believed the macula could be cured. And then when they got there, it seemed more like it was a... Uh, 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 an SOS, like a call out, a like, like almost like the ring where it was somebody trying to share their pain across the eons, uh, hundreds of years to say, like, this is where I died. Know my story. Understand what the bat, what the background is here. And that it was all about making sure that uh, Basil or Basilius wasn't going to be forgotten the way that his 
the way that the way that he was, frankly, and the way that his sister was, um, having died on that battlefield where everybody perished, including her in the end. Um, it was just it was a really striking sort of like place that they were. The 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 I hate to say level design because that sounds very mechanical, but it was just it told so much in the way that it was also i did see earlier that sam lander was like we have to have a conversation about you playing extremely sad story games <laughs> i wasn't expecting I, I will say this i wasn't expecting a bright and cheerful story but this one did get much darker than i than i anticipated so what is saying March 8th, 2004 is kit's birthday wait a minute blade runner the movies no yes Set piece, yeah, that's a that's a good way to, to phrase it. Yeah, no, I I've talked about this in greater detail elsewhere. Not a big Blade Runner fan. I I, I appreciate the amount of attention and like uh, the verisimilitude, if I can use a, a big big artsy word, of the world. But in terms of a story, I just I I hope they do a whole Blade Runner franchise. We just have infinite talks about uh, replicants all the time. Never anybody talking about a second thing. Um, but let's let's. I I know that I'm I'm really on the dark end of that. Everybody else in the world really appreciates it, and that's that's cool. I'm not here to dump on all the Blade Runner fans out there, but I like the world. Anytime that you can have a world that feels like it had other stuff going on 15 minutes before like the cameras turned on i feel like that's really valuable and by the way like i've 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 shared my desire to see movies set in the alien universe that aren't just about xenomorphs and then we got some and they're of varying quality but it's like yeah man that's cool more of that please but they do some really great stuff with that remember the 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 that's the meal scene not the famous meal scene, but remember at the very beginning of Ridley Scott's Alien when everybody sort of like wakes up out of their cryopods and it's very like dreamlike and very slow motion and very like hazy. And then it sort of cuts to everybody just having a big meal and laughing together. And you already start to get a sense for their various personalities and their chemistry and the, how well they know each other in this just sort of like loud, like cafeteria setting where it's a little bit difficult to make out too much of any one thing that anybody's saying, but you really get a sense for the, for the theme of it. That, that stuff is what's missing from like the Blade Runner franchise where people are acting like human beings and not just like workaholics who would just have this one task that's in front of them at all times but that's it was like if anything i would bring it back to this where again it felt like it felt like the people of the world had a lot going on and it's so much more effective to have rats completely obliterate an entire city if you've had some time to walk around that city first and realize that like Oh yeah, they were pretty happy here until Hugo showed up. <laughs> that's when things really went downhill. And that's sort of the burden that Amicia is carrying and eventually the guilt that Hugo could not could not go any further. I would also submit that it's not I'm not entirely sold on the idea that Hugo couldn't have extricated himself if he had wanted to. He seemed really lucid. I don't think he wanted to. I think that I think that something that was going on with him before he gave himself off over to the macula was that he was fundamentally broken. He was bad and nothing was going to fix him. I feel like that's something that that's a conclusion that children, young children can come to in very dark times and with him, he had a lot more that would fuel that sort of belief than most, because everywhere that he went, death and pestilence and destruction followed, whether he intended it to or not. And he said it multiple times, I did this, I'm the one. And I think that when he gave himself over to the macula and became rather um, astral in his sort of understanding of the nearby area, I feel like he understood that, like, even if I could, well, this, what he believed at least, even if I could get out, it would just bring more suffering. It would just be more anguish on the people. And I'm not going to do that. Hugo was a person of tremendous conscience, and his life was not worth the suffering of others 
At least that's what he came to. And I feel like the the most distressing part of that for me is what Amicia appeared to correctly point out at one point when she said to her mother, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it was, it was, it was when they reunited in the Duke's castle just before everything got really bad. And then I didn't really talk about it from there. Amicia says to her mother, remember, everything was fine. Remember when we were on the road? Remember when we were just living our lives? He was fine. There weren't any rats. None of this was happening. It wasn't until, like, we got to the city and things got stressful and, and like, Vauden showed up. Well, they, they brought in Vauden. They got to the city. They introduced Hugo to Vauden. If I'm not saying that correctly, I apologize. And then everything got terrible. If they hadn't done that, if they had stayed on the road or, better yet, gone up to live at their, like, mountain cabin and Hugo could have just had a happy life there, there's no reason to believe that that sort of pestilence would ever have come around. And I feel like that's the idea that would haunt me at the end of this, that Hugo believed he was irreparable, but Amicia knew better. Amicia could see that possibility in a way that Hugo, being very young and having just a very a much more narrow set of experiences to draw from, he just can't envision anything other than what he's been through most recently. He just doesn't have that perspective. And we'll, we'll not know, I guess, but the fact that that's an open question at the end is just a testament to how good the writing is. Um, so that's that's my thoughts there. Uh, Harmonious Crow was saying... Oh, Crow, Crow uh, what is saying that you need to read the book? Oh, I've read, I've read. Um, do androids dream of a le- uh, do androids dream of electric sh- uh, sheep? I read it once. It was many, many, many years ago. I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was really great. I, I would, I would say it's the best of Philip K. Dick that I have read. Uh, I, I haven't read a lot of his stuff, but no, the book was much better. The book was much better than the movie. I thought, but that's that's, <laughs> I. I I would have to sit and reread the book in order to enunciate why I enjoyed it so much. But I remember, I remember watching Blade Runner, and then I remember reading the book and being like, "Oh, they should have made this book into that movie." <laughs> that was my takeaway from it. But Harmonious Crow is saying that, like, yeah, that Hugo was broken. Um, if he had extricated himself, then he would not have been himself, and that was not what he wanted to be. Um, HRF Dude is saying, kids' minds think and act very differently. Hugo and Amicia were both kids, basically, um, and the game depicted this difference of thinking very well. Yeah, yes, strong agree on all of that for, for both of you. But Deacon says, it, said, it turned bad when they ended up in the place that got burned down at the very start because he summoned rat, rats at that point when Amicia was down. Oh, wait, did they? Uh, did he? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, the bee people at the very beginning. That was where things, like, started to turn. But again, when they were out and happy, basically, when Hugo wasn't getting physically attacked and didn't see his family in mortal danger, there was fun. There, he was fine. He was perfectly fine. Now, if Hugo aged up to be a teenager with all of the wild mood swings that that can bring, would that have been a bad time? I, I don't know, but I'm not, I'm not, I, I wouldn't have wanted him to give up now on the fear that at some other point, a decade hence, I don't know how old he is, he's 10, so uh, four or five years from now, uh, everything's going to get like really, really bad. You know, let's, let's give that a shot. Let's give him a shot to, like, learn how to control things. But that's that's my thoughts there. Um, I think that's it about for a Plague Tale Requiem. The only other thing was that in the entire game... Hold on, can I hit... I don't want to hit continue. Can we see settings? I wanted to look here real quick. Because I, I didn't touch it again. So, health frequency... I never set this to default again. Uh, Sure. Oh, okay. Well, it, I guess it does default to normal. So the reason that I wanted to check that is that as of episode three, I had gone to here and I turned assistance outline off. And that was because, sorry, sorry. In episode, in episode three, I turned it back on because this is the default setting. But 
the reason that I did that is that in the whole game, in the whole entire game, there was one section that I got really, really lost in. And that was at the end of our episode two. I want to say it was at the end of chapter four in the game when Amicia's trying to make her way through this like like thicket of guard patrols. And I just, I fundamentally could not figure out where I was supposed to go. And I guess if you, let's actually look now, because... I'm just curious about this. If we turn this to off, hold on. Where do we go? Here to custom. And then I just turned that to off. Okay. Does that turn help frequency to off as well? No. So yeah, I played the entire time with this set to off. And I guess maybe I should have, maybe default was normal. But yeah, I felt... I was concerned about getting turned around and lost at other points in the game. And although I got turned around a couple of times, I never got that lost again. I really fundamentally misunderstood where I was supposed to go. And I want to rewatch that episode to see if there was like more dialogue from Amicia or something. Because like when Drienne stopped by, they said that they had no problem. They also played with that off and had no problem. I think Patikin said that he had no problem. I just, I, I have not felt that lost in a game in a while where it's like, I, I feel like I've been everywhere I can go and just, I'm honestly not sure how to progress that. But then I turned the help outline back on, but set the, the help like frequency to off. So it never actually did anything for the rest of the game. So yeah, that was the, it was the only part in the game where it's like, I, I, I really don't know if that was a level design thing or a me thing. And when I'm not sure, I'm much more inclined to say that it's a me thing. Like I, I don't know what I missed, but that was that was frustrating to be that sort of like, I know I'm supposed to go somewhere, but I go to the docks, it's not there. I go to like the end of this map, I turn around, it's just a big bonfire over there that I've already like fought my way past. Where am I supposed to go? But we figured it out in the end. So that was the most important thing. Crow says, I'm glad that you liked the game and enjoyed the story. I'm heading off to fetch something for the mother-in-law's place, so I may miss the end of your stream. If not, see you later. Crow, thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. And Patekin saying, help frequency is characters saying stuff, I think. Um, the backseat gaming setting. It, well, but they still said stuff, and I, I like, even when you saw it here, it, it was off, and then I... I thought that the help frequency might have been the, um... Like, like, how long it took the outline to come up. Or whatever but anyway that's it that's a plague tale requiem uh one of the things that i was hoping to do during 2024 is to play through some of the less long story focused games that have been on the uh, on the agenda for a while and this was the second one that we've done in 2024 and I, again it feels a little bit strange to say in a game like this that i really had a good time but yeah it was a very enjoyable game and i game experience i'd say and i looked forward every single time to like being able to play it again with you guys but that's what we're going to call it thank you so much for joining us for this complete playthrough of a plague tale requiem a full collection and or playlist will be here on the channel so that you'll be able to see all of the episodes in order and catch up on anything that you might have missed if that's uh, the way that you'd, you'd like to check it out. And otherwise, we'll be back very, very soon with the launch of another brand new game. Until next time, you guys, thank you so much, and I hope you have a great night.